This week in wrestling headlines, Stefan Mijic returns for his eighth season. Iowa adds women's wrestling, and this team is added to the National Collegiate Duels. We're going to talk about that. So let's start stalling and start talking wrestling. What's going on, wrestling fans? My name is Josiah, and welcome to Wrestling Headlines here on the Fanco Wrestling YouTube channel, or maybe you're listening on your favorite podcasting platform. And that actually reminds me, I want to let you know that I'm giving away a free Fanco Wrestling shirt just for subscribing to your to the Fanco Wrestling Show on your favorite podcasting platform. Now, what you do so that I know that you're entered in the contest, you have to follow the link in the description that'll take you right to the contest. You enter your email and then you subscribe to the Fanco Wrestling Show on Apple, on Spotify, on Google, wherever you listen to podcasts on a daily basis, that's where you subscribe to the Fanco Wrestling Show. And by doing that, you're helping to support the show, helping to grow the Fanco Wrestling Show to meet meet even more college wrestling fans, but you're also getting the weekly Fanco Wrestling headlines as well as the Fanco Wrestling Show every single week uh, for audio, whether you're listening on the go, on your commute, uh, at the gym, cutting the grass. I mean, that's all places that I listen to podcasts, so why not listen to the Fanco Wrestling Show on audio with the incentive now of getting a free Fanco Wrestling t-shirt. The winners will be drawn actually this upcoming Thursday, so make sure that you enter uh, as soon as you can. And let's get into the headlines uh, from this past week. So, Safan Mijic is back for another season in wrestling. His eighth year in fact, he is back. This is just absolutely still blows my mind that he's still wrestling. I mean, me just literally graduated high school the same year that I did in 2014 and is still wrestling in college. I mean, that it's just how the timeline kind of uh, comes into play. And I'll, I'll show you that timeline in a second. But he announced this on Instagram. I am back. One last dance. Team 100, referring to this is Michigan's 100th team, 100th season in the big show in Detroit. Everything is coming together. That's really awesome. I mean, if you think about Mitch, like from like a Michigan uh, on Michigan's team, this is his hundredth season. He's finally going, you know, going after that NCAA title that he's always wanted. Uh, and he also said, "I'm thankful for the opportunities that I've had." This is what he said in a quote uh, on Instagram. I've had, uh, you know, being an NCAA champion is something I've had. I have one last shot of doing, and I'm not going to leave any stones unturned. Although it seemed like I've been in college forever, I've only competed in three college seasons. The last season for me and the team will be the greatest God willing. And the thing is, you know, I gave a little bit of slack in a recent uh like Instagram real video I posted on YouTube as well, just saying like, how is Mitch back? But then the class of 2020 seniors didn't get that year of eligibility back. Like Luke Pletcher, Colin Moore, like those guys, Pat Lugo, they got cheated out of a year, but then Mitchis is able to come back. How does that make any sense? Well, he this is his timeline. So he was a redshirt at Northwestern first year. Then he transferred over to Michigan. And at that time, it was actually like, is he going to get his year of eligibility back? And he was allowed to still have four years of eligibility. Then 2016, for those Olympic games, he actually took an Olympic redshirt. Finally, the next year, he, he wrestled his first season as a redshirt freshman, even though, you know, it was his third year of college. Uh, He wrestled 2017 through 2019. He became a three-time All-American, made the NCAA Finals against Seth Gross, and that was the 2018 season. Incredible uh, NCAA Finals, just such a fun season for Micic. And then he took an Olympic redshirt in 2020. Now, of course, the games were canceled that year, but so he decided to continue that red shirt through the 2021 season, the free year due to the pandemic. And finally, this is his last season at Michigan. So listen, he's taking advantage of the opportunity that's in front of him. If he, if the NCAA is allowing him to go after one last NCAA title, all the power to him. And he will be back again at Michigan. Now, the other program I want to talk about going from Michigan to Iowa. Iowa just added women's wrestling to their their D1 slate of athletics at the University of Iowa. This was huge news over this past week, and Tom Brains actually got fired up about adding women's wrestling to uh, the university. He this is what he had to say in an interview. The stakes are high for the new coach. We're going to wrestle the best competition in the United States, the best collegiate competition in the United States. We're going to recruit unbelievable young talent that is already winning age group international championships and medals. 
So look, it's like no surprise that Brands is super excited and and is going to be going after you know being not only the best men's wrestling team, but of course he wants to have the best women's wrestling team at Iowa uh, as well. And that that's just kind of how he talks. It's awesome uh, to hear him talk like that. But the other thing that he got fired up about is actually about Iowa uh, adding and sanctioning women's wrestling like a state tournament. He said he thinks. He said, when I think of the state of Iowa, it's a no-brainer that there should be a women's wrestling state championship. And I guess there's some other things going on in Iowa with, like, uh, who's going to actually host the tournament and this and that. There's a lot of other uh, politics, I guess, involved in it. But it's interesting. So Iowa has now become the first Power 5 conference to add women's wrestling, which is huge. There are actually a lot of other women's programs throughout college wrestling uh, from D1, D2, D3, NAIA, uh, JUCO, Community College. There's a lot of other women's wrestling programs, which is fantastic. And and just in D1, there's Presbyterian, Sacred Heart, and now Iowa. And I think we're going to see that trend continuing. Uh, One person in particular who was excited about this, other than brands, was Tamira Metzestock, the Olympic gold medalist from this past year. She said uh, in, in to Intermat, this is amazing news for women's wrestling. It's good to see these changes taking place, especially because there are so many states sanctioning female wrestling. It makes me happy to see this is happening, and I want to thank Iowa for being a pioneer in the sport. With this decision, I know it will only be a matter of time before other Division One schools follow their lead. Now, the thing is, there's no head coach yet, but already, you think on the surface, I mean, if I was the first big program to get women's wrestling, where do you think all the great high school wrestlers are going to go? Iowa. Now that they actually have a program, they're going to get the best recruits right off the bat, and that's going to be fantastic for building that program right away. So that's why I think you you may see other schools really start to jump on this so they can start building up their program. It's great for the women's sport in college wrestling. Uh, now, like I said, no head coach yet, but they plan to start competition to 2023 season, and we'll see what leads into that. And then Speaking of, you know, I mentioned already Michigan and Mitrich is back coming to uh, Michigan this year. But unfortunately, Michigan is out of the upcoming National Collegiate Duels. They will not be competing there this December. But there is a team that is in, and that is Penn State. So on Penn State's schedule, they released it in the last week, and and they had Duels Fest on their schedule, and it was taking place the same weekend as the National Collegiate Duels. So I I mean, me just as a as a fan being excited about this, I'm like duels fest. Like, what is this? Is this something else from the National Collegiate Duels? Maybe Penn State wasn't invited to the National Collegiate Duels, and so they are going to something else in spite of that. Uh, but no, it actually turns out that this is the same exact thing. Penn State will be wrestling in the National Collegiate Duels on December 20th and 21st in Florida. This is a huge and very exciting thing because not only will Penn State be there, but there are 12 of the best of the premier college wrestling teams that will be at the National Collegiate Duels in Florida. It's the first time they're coming back in a couple of years. And who else is going to be there? So like I said, Michigan unfortunately pulled out, but Cornell is going to be there. Iowa is going to be there. Arizona State, NC State, Missouri. I mean, a slew of teams, 12 teams in total. They're going to be competing one day. Uh, the first day, they're going to be competing in pools. And uh, and then the next day is when you have the four-man bracket, the four-team bracket. And I'm hoping we're going to get that Iowa-Penn State duel. Potentially, an Iowa and Penn State twice to be dueling during this upcoming season if they wrestle at the National Collegiate Duels and then during the regular season. I'm super psyched to see what happens there. And uh, I mean, I'm sure you're super pumped as well. But I wanted to remind you again, don't forget to enter the Fanco Wrestling Giveaway. I'm giving away a free shirt. That giveaway is only running for a limited amount of time. So make sure you jump on that. All you have to do is subscribe to the Fanco Wrestling Show on Apple, on Spotify. The link for the giveaway is right down in the description. And I'll talk to you next week.